Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the vignette filter that's found in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. In episode 17, I covered the effects panel that, of course, is found in the develop module. The effects panel and the effects filter are functionally pretty much the same. They have the same preset styles and the same sliders. But with the vignette filter, you're able to do just a little bit more. And I'm going to, tr going to try to demonstrate that in this video. I have this image. It was processed in the develop module, but no vignette has been added to it. So I'm in the effects module and I'm going to go to add filter and down to vignette. I mentioned it has pretty much the same styles and sliders, but we'll go over those real quick anyway. We have a subtle style, so we click on that and we get a subtle vignette. Strong, big softy, edges. Then under the drop down we have those four plus we have several others. We have that big softy again, then we have black edges, burnout, center spot, center spot bright dark edges, then we have edges again, then we have lightened edges, then we have strong again, subtle again, then we have white edges and white vignette. So we have the same styles. Now you could access those and see them side by side. If we go over in the left panel and click on filters, you'll see all those styles side by side. If you click on this grouping of four bricks, You'll get a larger view of them. And if you like one, let's say you like dark edges, you could just simply click on it and it will automatically apply that to your image. Now, as far as the functionality itself for the vignette, it is again identical to the vignette panel in the develop module, but I'll quickly go over it for this vignette filter. We have the brightness slider. If you move it to the left, you'll get a dark vignette. If you move it to the light right, you'll get a light vignette. I'm going to leave it on dark just to help demonstrate the other sliders. The size slider will determine how much of the image is being vignetted. If you have it to the left, you're going to have a very large vignette where most of the image will be vignetted. If we move it to the right, we'll start pulling it away from the center and we'll be uh, keeping the vignette more towards the edges and corners. Feathering, if you move it to the left, you'll get you'll reduce feathering to you have none at all. And if we move it to the right, we'll just keep increasing the feathering of the vignette. And the roundness does as it mentions. If you move it to the left, we'll get a rectangular vignette. Of course, if I had a square image, I'd get a square vignette. And as I move it to the right, we'll get more and more oval until we're getting more and more round. So that is what roundness does. Now the type of vignette, there's three different kinds. You have this normal vignette, which is what you're looking at. Then subtle, you can see it is considerably less noticeable and soft, which is somewhere in the middle. So you can just kind of pick one that you like. I'll leave it on normal for this demonstration. You could center the vignette. If your subject isn't right smack dab in the middle, let's say it's offset to the subject, and you don't want the vignette over your subject's face or whatever is your subject, you don't want it covered by the vignette at all, you could center the vignette so it's over the middle of your subject. And to do that, you would click this little tool right here, and when it's colored, it's active, and you see your cursor turns into a crosshair. And you could just click anywhere on your image. So you could center it there. You could click on the tool again and recenter it. Another little trick you could do is activate the tool by clicking on it. Then hold the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Hold that in, click with your left mouse button, and then you could move the entire vignette around and put it exactly where you want. Just like that, when you're done, just let go of the mouse button and then let go of the Alt or Option key and you're good to go. So, as I mentioned, that's pretty much identical to what is found in the develop module. I'm going to reset this by clicking on this little semicircle here. But why should I even do this video? Well, there's a little bit more you could do with the vignette filter. 
For example, let's say I decided that I want to use Big Softy just because I want, it, I want to make sure you see it. And I'm going to um, move the size in a little bit and I'm going to make it a little bit less feathered. So it's a little more obvious what we're dealing with here. Let's say I'm looking at it and boy, it's really making the bottom corners a little bit too dark, but I really like what it did with the rest of the image. Well, we have a mask. So we could click on the mask tool. We could go up to the tool attributes and make sure that we're in paint out mode. Uh, you would get the correct size by either clicking that little drop down right there and using this slider to affect the size of the brush. Or you could use the br uh, bracket keys on your keyboard. Left bracket key makes the brush smaller. Right bracket key makes the brush larger. You could then do the same thing with feathering with the bracket keys. You could go up to feathering and either use the slider or um, if you hover over either size or feathering, you could see that the cursor turns into that horizontal double arrow. That's called a scrubby slider. You could then affect the feathering and or the size with that scrubby slider by clicking with the left mouse button and dragging your mouse left or right to adjust, in this case, the size. Or click on feather and then drag left or right to change the feathering of the brush. So I'm going to want a heavily feathered large brush and I want the opacity down quite a bit. I recommend that you start with a very low opacity if you're just kind of lessening a vignette because each stroke will be cumulative. So you could try it and if it's not enough, give it another stroke and give it another stroke until you get it like you want it. So I, then I could come in here and I could lighten this vignette down here. Now I think it's pretty good on the left, but it's not, it's still a little bit too dark on the right. So I could give that another stroke over there. So you could see how the vignette filter is a bit more powerful than the vignette panel that's in the develop module because the vignette panel does not have the ability to use a mask. So that makes this a bit better in my opinion. I'm going to reset it. So we'll come out of here. We're going to reset our mask so that's not being applied anymore. And we'll close that down temporarily. I'm going to go back to Big Softy and affect it in a similar way that I did before so you could really see the vignette. This isn't a vignette that I personally would use. The other thing you could do is you could um, click on this little gear right here. And when you click on that, we have blending options and then apply to options. The blending options, mainly most of them won't look right. You could just kind of hover over them and see what it does. And you could see that a lot of them really affect the image adversely. Where you may want to use a blending option is way down here at the bottom, luminosity. You could see that that didn't really do a lot, but you may find that sometimes when you add a vignette to your image, the part where the vignette is being applied may shift the colors of your image slightly. And sometimes we don't want that color to be shifted. If you just go down here to luminosity, it will help alleviate that issue. So you could just go to blending options, luminosity. And again, that is not available in the vignette panel that is found in the develop module. It's only available here with the vignette filter in the effects module. So again, you could just go do that. Now you could see it doesn't really change anything, but it will help if you have a color shift. The other is apply to. You could just go here and apply it just to the highlights, midtone shadows, and you could see it really doesn't seem to do a lot. It's going to depend on your image. For this image, obviously it's not doing anything at all. So I'll just leave it on all. But you could experiment with that. If you can't really find a vignette that's working for you and your image, just for the heck of it, click on the little gear and go to apply to and see if that helps. You also could click on this little eyedropper and use the eyedropper to click a tone and or color in your image for it to apply the vignette to. And again, as you can see, it's really not doing anything for this image. You also could use the sliders to help protect parts of your image. If you don't want it on the shadows, on this dark, darker part down here, I could take the shadow slider and move it to the right. And you could see how it's beginning to remove it from the shadows. 
but it does appear I'm getting a little bit of a color shift. Maybe it's my eyes. Yeah, a little bit. That helps. So we go to luminosity and that helps. So these three sliders will help you protect the uh, certain parts of your image, either highlight shadows or if you have a person in it, will help protect any skin tones uh, that the vignette may be affecting. Um, again, just, you know, see what works for you. When you're on an apply to, you also could move the range slider and you could see how that is helping me better apply the vignette only on the shadows. Or maybe I won't only want it on the highlights. You could see how that is affecting the sky because that's brighter, but not affecting the water as much because that's more of a shadow. So all these little things are only available with the vignette filter in the effects module. So I'm going to reset that back to its uh, default and I'm going to close down um, that for a minute. We're going to go back to a big softy. Often I like to have a vignette that just isn't available with one vignette filter. And that's the great thing about the effects module is we could double up and triple up, quadruple up filters if you wanted to. So what I sometimes will do if I have an image that has very bright edges, I may put like something like the big softy on the image uh, so that it kind of darkens that. But maybe I'm feeling that the edges aren't dark enough. Well, I could come and move size in, but that's going to start maybe moving it too far toward the middle, and I don't want that. Uh, brightness already is all the way down, so I can't do anything there. But what I can do is I could add a second vignette. So I'll click on vignette and in this case maybe I'll just do edges. So I have this one doing edges and I have this one doing more of like uh, the middle of the image uh, encroaching more towards the middle. And if one is a little heavy maybe I think the edges one is a little bit heavy I could take the opacity slider and just reduce it a little until it kind of matches my image a little better. So there are times where I will apply multiple vignettes, usually no more than two. As a matter of fact, I don't recall ever applying any more than two. But sometimes I will when it's needed. So I hope you could understand why I believe the vignette filter in the effects module is a better way to go in most instances than the vignette panel in the develop module. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.